Sons of the Forest has officially left early access, and N Night Games have introduced some interesting and somewhat bonkers additions to the already roller coaster ride of a story, including learning more about our protagonist, strange mutant destroying artifacts, and a pregnant Virginia. Strap in for spoilers because we're about to look at every new ending compared to early access. Before we look at the endings for Sons of the Forest, it's worth noting the opening moments have changed as well. As in early access, the initial helicopter crash is still there. This time, however, Sons of the Forest's mysterious antagonist, Jian Yu Zhang, has something to say before knocking you out. Now who invited you? It's also now revealed that the protagonist isn't a hired mercenary like previously speculated, but instead a member of the press, as revealed with Zhang tearing the identifying patch off our clothing before bonking us on the head with his revolver. Later on, you'll come across an email sent by Edward Pufton, the CEO that initially went missing and the reason why you're here in the first place, with him explicitly asking for Jack Holt, a member of the press, asking us to uncover what's happened on the island and to make sure his daughter is safe. It's great to finally get some answers on the character we've been playing as all this time, but unfortunately for Edward, he'll never find what he was looking for. Unlike the early access version of Sons of the Forest, Timmy LeBlanc has found his voice, which he's now showing off on the way to the finale's bizarre dimensional cube cutscene. There's gotta be a way to open this. A key. Something. This scene also plays out differently compared to its pre-1.0 release, with the infected LeBlanc now proclaiming, This was supposed to fix me. It's making me worse. And what didn't fix Timmy completely transforms Jian Yu into a disgusting Resident Evil-like boss. Timmy, like before, will always be present during the scene, but this is where your prior choices come into play. Did you save Kelvin during the opening? Did you ignore Virginia or welcome her into your crew? Or were you just a bit of a lone wolf that potentially killed them both? All of these affect the ending, and here's how. If you decided to ignore, or more than likely, murder poor defenseless Kelvin and Virginia, then just like in Early Access, only Timmy and yourself make it into the cube. But unlike in Early Access, what happens afterwards is substantially different. Previously, you'll be placed back into the world and have to make the simple choice of either staying on the island or leaving with the LeBlancs in a helicopter. But now N Knight has turned the craziness to 11, introducing a boss fight against the disgustingly blobby mess previously known as Jian Yu. He goes to town on our helicopter fare and saviors as he completely devours a mercenary while shouting, What did you see? What did you see? What was in the pupa? What was in the pupa? And then the fight of your life begins. The madness doesn't end there though. Once he's defeated, you're quickly overrun by a horde of mutants. But don't worry, because the LeBlancs have brought back up in the form of Christianity's finest and potentially Spanish-speaking gang of mercenaries. After that tussle, a mysterious artifact appears out of nowhere to save the day. This ancient golden contraption wipes out the mutant horde. You'll then be presented with a choice, a familiar one for those who played in Early Access. Will you return to the depths of the forest and investigate this artifact further? Or will you listen to Timmy's pleas to escape the island with him? Don't go near it. Don't. It's drawing you back in. Don't touch it. If you pick the latter, you'll escape via helicopter as you did previously. But this time it's a bit more action-packed. You're then treated to a brand new epilogue scene, showing Timmy's mutations have worsened and that he's now on the brink of madness. Even as an adult, this poor guy can't catch a break, with his own doctor saying, I've told you I can't help you. Timmy presents the doctor with a sample of Solophyte, the rare golden mineral found deep within caves during your playthrough, which supposedly contains life-saving properties if harnessed correctly. 
The scene ends and the credits roll. But the story doesn't end there, as we're shown numerous magazines and newspapers explaining that Solify is in fact a miracle cure. And after Timmy was able to free himself of his mutant shackles, he's now a pharmaceutical king, sharing the wonders of Solify to the masses. And in a not so shocking turn of events, Timmy ends up discovering another island filled to the brim with Solophyte, which he ends up purchasing and unsurprisingly goes missing afterwards. Well, I guess that's the sequel sorted then. But what happens if everyone's favorite stick gathering companion, Kelvin, is still alive by the end of your journey? Like Timmy, Kelvin also gets his own epilogue, with Jack Holt visiting the PJ Warren soldier in the brain injury ward. And the both of you get to share a rather wholesome moment building a toy log cabin together. Seems like Kelvin's mind still doesn't stray too far from his favorite pastime, even at a smaller scale. Proving she also survives, Virginia's epilogue is far more bleak. In a creepy hospital hallway, a terrified-looking Virginia is rushed through the doors of an operating theater. Based on what we know from the ending, more on that in a bit, she's going into surgery to get rid of all those extra mutant limbs. However, if both Kelvin and Virginia make it to the end, and you've fully befriended the lovable mutant, you'll get treated to a rather cheerful secret ending that takes place five months after the events of the game. And strap in, because it's a little funky. By the looks of it, our silent protagonist has done pretty well for himself. He's got a brand new sports car, he's seemingly shacked up with a now regular amount of limbs Virginia, and started a family with her? That's right, Virginia is now pregnant. Not only that, but a content-looking Kelvin joins them in the back seat, still rocking those damn pajamas. Have we just adopted Kelvin after the horrific events of that helicopter crash? Or is he just third-wheeling it from now on? Whatever's going on, they at least look like they're in a happier place as they drive off into their shared future. What do you think of the 1.0 changes and from what you've seen, what are your theories on what might happen in the sequel? Let us know in the comments below and for more Sons of the Forest, make sure to watch the developers sharing 13 amazing updates found in 1.0.